Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg. Today Jessica and I are going to be making some candy for a custom client, a corporate client, who wants the name of their new product done in candy. The company that makes the game War Robots commissioned us to do this batch of candy, and I guess by extension this video. As you can probably guess, I'm not a gamer, but Jessica is. And she's told me that it's a 6x6 multiplayer game with 3D graphics, and she downloaded, and apparently about 90 million other people did. And uh, I guess I'm going to just parrot back what Jessica told me here. Our design is going to be just the text, War Robots, and the outside wrap is going to be made in sort of a camouflage stripe or a camouflage palette of colors striped around the outside to match the robots in this game. I've been watching a lot of robots this week getting ready to make this build. I love it when a customer trusts me to do what I think is best in the design. Now, I was completely unfamiliar with their game, so I started doing some research. I wanted to do a robot like Griffin here, but there was just too much detail. Since the candy was being used to promote the game, I felt the game name was the strongest thing I could do that I knew I could do well. Then I wanted to select colors, so I went to their website and the backgrounds of the website are black and yellow. I selected that for the text in the background, and then I picked the stripes of the candy and I based that off the color of the robots that I saw. Also, if you're interested in the War Robots game, there's a deal going on right now. If you install War Robots, you'll get a huge starter pack with one Griffin robot, two pin weapons, two Tumbala's weapons, 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. Jessica at least says that's pretty cool. And since this is a multiplayer online game, who knows, you may be shooting at one of us. They really gave me some good primary source material so I could know their product. So far, we've poured the hot sugar on the candy cooling table, we've let it cool, and now we're boiling off the food coloring as we add it. The food coloring has water in it, and water will make the candy sticky. So we've got to stir it in with these little wooden spoons and get all the water out of it, and it keeps the candy from stick being sticky and makes the candy last longer. Then, we're going to add some citric acid. Now, the flavor this time is mango. And mango's a delicious flavor, but it has just the tiniest amount of sour in it. And we control this by re-adding the citric acid, since the mango flavoring has no sour built into it. Candy making, and I guess all of the food arts, use more senses than most arts. You know, we're dealing with taste, touch, sight, smell. It's just fun to do. The edges of the candy have cooled to the touch, but the centers are still hot and lava-like and liquid. So we're going to cut it into the palette of colors that we've generated and cut each color out individually. And then we're going to drain the hot sugar onto the table and put the cold sugar on top of it. This is going to let the hot sugar cool down and the cold sugar warm up. We're going to continue to fold it and let it drip from time to time to even out the temperatures. We need all the temperature in the candy to be about the same. Somewhere during this process, the cool edges become hot like the center, and we have to switch to use using our heavy gloves to protect our hands from the heat. Besides the yellow dividing lines, we want to make three colors on the outer stripes, but we've only made two, brown and green. We're going to make the brown, which is a dark brown, a light tan, or at least half of it light tan, by pulling it on the candy hook. We usually pull the naturally amber candy to white on the hook or on our candy pulling machine. But it works with any color, and it doesn't work consistently. Some colors that you think will become another color or pastel version of itself really change. But if we're using our natural caramel coloring, the brown becomes a wonderful light tan, and we thought that would go with the, sort of this camouflage military color motif. We're going to be pulling it time and time again, and this is going to get air bubbles into the candy. The air bubbles reflect the light and bring in a white undertone, so it's going to lighten the candy and make it opaque at the same time. It'll also give more surface area for your saliva to dissolve the candy, so the candy will dissolve a little faster and give you a stronger burst of flavor. So having pulled candy as part of the design is good for the taste as well as the eye. The yellow background also needs to be stretched, and Jessica's going to stretch it on our candy pulling machine. Some people call this a taffy puller, and it is, but it's meant for pulling any type of sugar you want. We're going to be pulling this yellow until it becomes nice and opaque. The candy pulling machine sort of has a minimum volume it can do. Perhaps 15 to 18 pounds of sugar is the small end of what it can pull. So for smaller batches like the brown, we still use the hook. If you'd like to try the candy for yourself, go to our website, www.pd.net. You can order the candy there. You can also put in requests to see if we can do a custom order. If you're ever coming through Tallahassee, please visit us. Our store is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. most days, and we'd love to see you there. We don't make candy all the time, but we do make it an awful lot. Hopefully you'll be lucky enough to catch it. 
Building text in Candy can be tricky. There are two major problems. One, which is just a problem, that things cool unevenly. You want the center of the words to be cooler than the outside, because if you put a hot letter in the middle, it won't cool off. It's being blocked by the candy on either side of it, and it'll become a weak point and it'll bend. The other problem is also an advantage. If you have a letter that shows up in more than one place, you can make one larger letter, pull it longer, cut in half, and you have both letters made. The problem with this is you want to apply them both to the candy at the same time. So the order you assemble the letters is critical. And you'll see that because I do both things here for this candy belt. So I made the B first. Now I'm going to make the O's. And I'm just going to make one large O, stretch it long, cut it in half, and put it on either side of the B with some spacer. It's like multiplication of candy. You can make carbon copies of the same image. The trick is to make the big one the right size bigger so when you stretch it down, everything's to the same scale. I build the T, and if you notice, I have two blocks of candy, one for the word war and one for the ro word robots. And of course, the T is going into the robots. Then come the letter R's. We have two of them, so once again, I'm going to build them big and stretch them. And this is good because R's are very hard to build small. So I'm going to be building it with a circle of candy and a triangle of candy, a flat back, and then a black wrap on the front. It's then going to be pulled out, cut in half, and put one at the end of war and one at the beginning of robots. That only leaves the letter S, and it's easy enough to bend around two cylinders of candy. And we tack it on the end, and our letters are complete. Now we have to build our stack. We put a yellow spacer between the two lines of text, spacer candy, of course. And then we just wrap it in the roll of hot sugar, the pulled yellow that we pulled earlier, and we put it in the middle. And I've got to roll this for a bit. I don't show all the rolling, but it lets the center heat up. The text has gotten very cold. We need everything to be about the same temperature when we pull it on our batch roller. Jessica has built the stripe outer wrap, and we just wrap it up, and it's ready to go. The batch roller keeps the candy moving. If it sits in one place, it's going to go flat under its own weight. It's still fairly molten. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. So by Jessica putting it on this machine, it's going to keep it tumbling and keep it round. She's then going to be able to pull out the end, cut off the scrap end, which we call a unicorn dropping and we sell in our store, and then she's going to be able to pull out logs of candy that hopefully have the words Robot Wars in the center of every piece. The outer wrap colors are very thick in, on the log, but when we pull it, the colors become thinner, and that lets more light pass through. The light is passing through, say, the green panel to the yellow background, then bouncing back out. That's going to make the green look more yellow, and we're counting on this to make it look more like the military green. The transparent brown is going to have a similar effect, but less so because it's brown, and the pulled brown won't let any light through, so it'll look like tan no matter what we do. It's a neat effect. But it's one of these things you got to plan ahead for, because the colors on the final wrap are rarely, especially when you do a center color, the colors you're expecting. And all that's left to do is cut a few thousand pieces of candy. Thank you for watching. We're Lofty Pursuits located in Tallahassee, Florida. If you're interested in trying out candy for yourself, please go to www.pd.net. You can also subscribe to us here on YouTube. We have lots of videos here for you to check out. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're ever driving past Tallahassee on I-10, please stop on by. We're right off the interstate. Lofty Pursuits is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., and we'd love to see you. We don't make candy all the time, but you might be lucky and catch us. But there's a lot of other things to do here. We serve breakfast in the morning and we serve ice cream at night. Thank you for watching. We hope to meet you in person someday.